Welcome to the Love and Light Live podcast, empowering crystal lovers to learn and experience the art of crystal healing. Get ready to listen in and follow your soul calling with crystals. Hello, and thank you so much for joining me for the Love and Light Live podcast brought to you by loveandlightschool.com. I'm your host, Ashley Levy, and this podcast is the number one place for all things crystals. In today's show, we'll explore how to cleanse energy with a selenite wand. And I'll actually be talking about three different ways that you can use your selenite wand for cleansing and clearing energy, some of which might be new to you. But before we get started, I'd like to answer one of our listener questions. Remember, you can submit your own questions anytime at loveandlightschool.com slash ask for the chance to have your question answered right here on the show. Today's question comes from Jasmine G. And Jasmine says, could you tell us how to make an altar? Does it go by seasons or months? This is a great question, Jasmine, and the answer is, it's really up to you. If you feel called to create an altar space, then I think the most helpful thing is to take some time to really consider your intention or your purpose behind creating an altar. For example, I usually do have some sort of seasonal altar up in my space, and I tend to rotate those through the holidays of the wheel of the year. So currently, I still have my in-bulk altar up as it's February 12th, and I'll leave that up probably until about the second week of March, where I will switch it over to an altar for the spring equinox, and I'll do that just a few weeks before the spring equinox. However, I also have altars in my space to different gods and goddesses. And I have other altars for different purposes. For one example, I have an ancestor altar. So start by thinking about your purpose or your intention for that space. What is it that you're trying to do? What is it that you're trying to create? What energies are you looking to call in? And then think through the things that you have available at hand, things that you already have or things that you can go outside and find in nature, of course, as long as you have permission to collect them. On the different altars that I have, you'll find a huge variety in the types of items that I choose to include. So some may have statues and, of course, crystals, as well as candles or offering dishes with water or herbs. There may be pieces of artwork, poems I've written, special objects or symbols that connect in with that energy, little acorns from my yard, things that I've crafted specific for my altar. Really, there's no right or wrong when it comes to the things that you're choosing to include. As long as you're being authentic to yourself and you're maintaining cultural sensitivity and you're keeping things relevant as your purpose and intention shift and change, then you're going to do a great job. Jasmine also says the thing that they struggle with the most when it comes to learning about crystals is feeling the energy of the crystal. And Jasmine, you're in luck because I actually talked about that in last week's blog or podcast. So if you missed that one, be sure to go back and give the article a read through or listen to that podcast episode. And Jasmine also mentioned that they've been wanting to learn more about crystal grids, but haven't had the time to dive into it yet. So I wanted to point you to a few really simple resources that will help get you started, Jasmine. So first and foremost, there is a great free blog post over on my website at loveandlightschool.com slash blog. If you just type the word grid into the search bar there, One of the top search results will be for a post called How to Create a Crystal Grid Step-by-Step. And this post walks you through everything you need to know about creating crystal grids. But if you want even more information and an in-depth understanding of grid creation, then be sure to get on the waitlist for my upcoming Crystal Healing Certification Program. You can head over to crystalhealerschool.com and sign up to get on the waitlist. I will send you a free sample class all about working with crystal grids, and it's one of the classes that's covered in the program. 
We'll even cover some specific recipes for a more in-depth look at creating crystal grids and different ways that you can apply them to your work with crystals. Well, Jasmine, I hope that helped answer your question. And if you're out there listening and you have a question that you'd like me to answer for you about crystals, spirituality, or anything else you're curious about right now, let me know over at loveandlightschool.com slash ask. Discover how you can deepen your spiritual journey and follow your soul calling with crystals. The Love and Light School's award-winning crystal healing certification program opens soon. Go to crystalhealerschool.com. And now it's time to dive into our main topic for today, how to cleanse with a selenite wand. Let's start out by saying when you're working with crystals, it's really easy to just get kind of swept up in the excitement and want to dive right in. But if you take a step back and do a little bit of prep work, Before you start your main crystal work, you can make sure that the time that you spend working with your stones is even more successful and worthwhile. And I recommend starting by clearing energy. And I do think this step seems to often get overlooked or skipped over, but no matter whether you're creating a crystal grid or performing a crystal layout or meditating with your favorite stone, by beginning that process with proper cleansing of yourself, your stones, and your space, it really goes a long way to ensuring a positive outcome from your crystal work. And I think a lot of us do think about cleansing our space from time to time. And of course, a lot of us also think about cleansing our crystals, but really as kind of a foundational practice for the work that you're doing, getting started with cleansing yourself, your space, and your crystals gets things going on the right foot. So the reason for this is that energy is all around us, right? We know this. And although cleansing typically gets associated with the idea of removing negative energy from our crystals, it really goes a lot deeper than this. Cleansing our own energy fields can help clear away all of the excess energy, that psychic debris or energetic clutter that surrounds us and that can get trapped in our field. So by clearing this energy away, by clearing your aura, clearing the energy that is sort of stuck in your field, you're removing energetic clutter so that you're better able to connect with your crystals and better able to tune into your own inner guidance. This is really important because that clutter can kind of get in the way when you're working with your stones and might even block your ability to receive and interpret important intuitive messages. Think about it like this. If you were trying to dial into a certain radio station and all you were picking up on was a lot of static because there were too many signals, it would be really hard to hear the specific music that you were trying to tune into. So basically, the energetic debris that's stuck in your field is just like that static. It makes it harder to connect with your stones or hear that specific song that you're trying to tap into. And ultimately, this makes it harder to connect to the world around you. So clearing your field removes this energetic clutter and better prepares you to connect with the crystals that you'll be working with next. Again, whether that's in a layout or a grid or for meditation. Now, of course, there are a lot of different methods of cleansing, but one of the quickest and most effective methods for energetic cleansing uses just one tool, just one crystal, selenite. And my favorite tool for this technique is the satin spar variety of selenite that's in the shape of a natural wand, which is sometimes called a blade or a stick. You've probably seen these. These are the long, slender pieces of selenite or the satin spar variety of selenite that are white and they have long striations on the surface of the stone. And these are so great for cleansing. So begin this process by holding the selenite in your dominant hand, that's your sending hand or the hand that you write with, and use the wand to sweep any negative or unwanted energy out of your field. To do this, just hold the crystal like a comb, so it should be parallel to the ground, about two to four inches away from your physical body and make long strokes through your aura from one end to the other. 
And while you're performing this sweeping action with the crystal, hold the intention to remove any energy that's not for your highest good. And then repeat this action on the front of your body, the back of your body, and the sides of your body to the best of your ability until you feel all of the excess and unwanted energy has been cleared from your field. If you need an accommodation to this technique to make it more accessible, you can also do this as if it were distance healing. So instead of trying to sweep your own body, which can be a little bit hard to reach in some places, you can instead work with a representation of your energy body, like an illustration or photograph that is representative of you, either something with your picture on it or your name written on it, something like that and perform the technique on the image instead of on your physical body to make it more accessible. You can also switch things up a little bit and do this technique for another person. So if you'll be performing a crystal healing session for someone else, this is a great way to begin the session. You'll just need to adapt the technique a little bit to perform it on another person. So you'll hold the selenite over your client's body and they can be sitting, standing, or lying down And you want to hold the stone about two to four inches away from them and slowly pass the wand through their energy field. Again, making sure to hold the intention to remove any excess or unwanted energy from their field as you do this. And I do want to mention here this sweeping technique also has the added benefit of assisting with energizing or grounding the person it's being performed on. So if you move the wand from the feet upward toward the head, it's really energizing since the energy is moving up through the body. Whereas if you sweep from the head down toward the feet, it's a really grounding and balancing technique. So consider which of these might be most helpful to you or to the person you're working on. And that's the direction that you should move the wand as you sweep through their aura. But the applications for this technique Don't stop with just clearing the energy of people. You can similarly use your selenite wand to sweep and clear the energy of your space. So start by choosing a corner of your room and hold your selenite wand parallel to the floor and raise it up toward the top where the wall meets the ceiling. Then slowly draw your wand down the walls toward the floor to clear the energy. So in essence, you're kind of sweeping the walls. Continue the sweeping action as you walk around the space, clearing each wall from the top toward the bottom, and then go along the base of each wall near the floor using your wand to sweep the unwanted energy toward the nearest exterior door or window to remove it from your space. And I want to assure you here, you don't have to reach all the way up to the ceiling, so no step ladders required for this process, and you don't have to reach all the way down to the floor to sweep the energy thoroughly. Just a general sweeping motion will do just fine. And if you'd like, you can repeat this process in each room of your home or your workspace to cleanse the entire space. And doing this about once a month goes a really long way to keeping your space feeling good. You can also use this same technique to quickly cleanse your crystals. So though this isn't my go-to method for cleansing, it does work in a pinch. Just use your wand to sweep the unwanted energy from a group of stones by, again, holding it parallel to the floor and then passing it over the stones several times with that same sweeping motion. And if possible, It's great if you can sweep this energy again toward an exterior door or window, just as when cleansing your space. And although this isn't my go-to method for cleansing, I normally like to work with sound, it is really effective for cleansing a large group of crystals. The only issue here, I think, is if you're someone who's not able to feel or sense the energy of your crystals very easily, then you might get hung up feeling like, well, how do I know if my crystals are really cleansed this way? How do I know if I've done it thoroughly enough? So if you struggle with feeling the energy of your crystals, one little extra tip I'd like to give you here is to feel free to work with a pendulum. Sometimes a pendulum can give us a good visual representation of the energy when we can't tune in and feel it. So you would start this process by holding your pendulum 
over the group of stones and asking it to show you the energy. How is the energy moving? Better yet, if you're not doing a big, huge group, it would be best to do this for each individual crystal. Then once you have an idea of what the energy is doing as your baseline, you can try this sweeping method for cleansing with your selenite wand and then come back and use the pendulum again and take note of how the energy has changed. And this can give you a really good indication of whether or not the energy has shifted in your crystals so that you know if your cleansing was effective. If you find that it hasn't changed very much, go back and try the sweeping again and then check with your pendulum one more time. But I do want to say the pendulum testing method isn't really foolproof because there are so many different ways to interpret the movements of your pendulum. So when in doubt, if you've been sweeping your crystals with your selenite wand for a minute or two, you're probably just fine. And this is just one method of cleansing. There are so many ways to cleanse your crystals, to charge your crystals, and I cover all of those in depth in my upcoming crystal healing certification program, which I mentioned earlier. So I'll share it here first. I'll be opening enrollment to my CCH program on Monday, February 27th, 2023. I am so excited about welcoming in a new round of students, and this is just one small part of what we cover in the program. It's so important to me to share lots of different methods for how you can work with your crystals because we all have to find the ways that kind of suit us and that work well for us. So I love sharing a variety of styles and approaches to all kinds of different topics about working with your crystals. So if you'd like to get more information about my program and get notified once enrollment opens, you can head over to crystalhealerschool.com and enter your email address to get added to the waitlist. And when you sign up for the waitlist, you're not committing to anything. You're just saying, hey, Ashley, I'd like to learn more about that. And I will send you a syllabus for my crystal healing certification program, as well as for my advanced crystal practitioner program, which is included with your CCH enrollment tuition. I'll also send you a couple emails introducing a bit about how the program works and sharing a few stories of my past CCH graduates. So again, if you'd like to get that info along with the syllabus and a sample class, head over to crystalhealerschool.com and enter your email address to get more details. Do you feel intuitively called to work more deeply with your stones? To grow your confidence, knowledge, and connection to crystal energy beyond what you can learn on your own? Our award-winning Crystal Healing Certification Program will take you from crystal lover to a confident, certified crystal healer and help you discover your soul's path and crystal purpose. Go to crystalhealerschool.com to learn more. Well, that is it for today. I hope that you found a lot of value in today's show. And if you want more information about anything I discussed in this episode, you can learn more over on the website at loveandlightschool.com slash blog. And as always, if you did enjoy the show today, the biggest compliment you can give me is to leave me a quick rating and a review over at loveandlightschool.com slash iTunes. These reviews are so important to the show because they help new listeners discover the podcast, and it's a great way to show your gratitude if you enjoy the show because I do work really hard to make sure that we don't have to rely on outside sponsors or advertisements to keep the show going so we can just keep it focused on crystals. So if you would be so kind as to leave a five-star rating and a review, I would be incredibly grateful. I read every review that comes in. So just head over to loveandlightschool.com slash iTunes to leave that review. And if you listen somewhere else, please, please, please feel free to rate and review on that platform as well. You can also head over to loveandlightschool.com slash listen to find out everywhere this podcast is available online. We've actually recently just been added to iHeartRadio. So at that link, you can find our most popular episodes, most recent episodes, and you could subscribe to the show on your favorite platform. 
That brings us to the end of this episode of the Love and Light Live podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Levy, and I'll be back with you in our next episode. Until then, crystal blessings. The Love and Light Live podcast is a production of the Love and Light School of Crystal Therapy. Connect with us online at loveandlightschool.com or on social at Love and Light School. The content provided on or through our website or podcast makes no claims for specific or general health or health results and should not be used to examine, diagnose, or treat any medical condition, prescribe medications, make claims for specific or general healing or health results, or as a substitute for traditional medical treatment. For medical advice, you should consult a licensed healthcare specialist. For more information, please refer to the terms of use on our website at loveandlightschool.com.